In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make someone's skin look better in Resolve. We're gonna look at how to smooth someone's skin, reduce fine lines, uneven complexions, and how to reduce and maybe even remove pimples. Oh, and if you're new here, I'm Allie, and Will and I release weekly-ish videos all about filmmaking, video editing, as well as gear reviews. I also recently put out a tutorial about how to sharpen someone's eyes in Resolve and track the movement of their heads as they're moving around. So I highly recommend you check that video out when you're done this one. All right, let's hop into Resolve and get started. So we're in Resolve and we have this clip of a woman whose skin has a bit of an uneven complexion. She also has larger pores and some pimples. And as she smiles, some of her pimples and blemishes move with her face into the shadows of her cheeks. And that might cause us some problems when we work on reducing and removing those blemishes. So we'll have to see how that goes. Let's go into the color page where we'll be working to make her skin look better. We're gonna be creating several notes. To keep things nice and organized, we'll label each one as we go. Let's right click on this first node and choose node label, type in original. I just like to have an original node without any effects or anything on it. Right click again and choose add node, add serial, which creates another node making sure that this new node is selected. We'll give it a label in a bit. For now, let's start working on our first effect by choosing the qualifier tool that looks like an eyedropper here. This tool is really great because it allows us to select and isolate part of our image based on hue, saturation, and luminance. I'll click on the chin area that shows some uneven coloring on her face. To get a look at exactly what we're selecting and isolating, let's click on the highlighter. So everything in color is what we've selected selected and isolated, which means when we add our effect, it's only gonna be applied to the colored areas. What I'm trying to do is select as much of her skin as possible without including her teeth or her hair. To refine this selection even more, we can adjust the luminance by dragging part of the slider to the right, which will affect the higher luminance areas, also known as the lighter areas or to the left, which will affect how much of the low luminance or darker areas are included in the selection. We can also sort of soften out our selection so we don't get any artifacting by dragging this triangular part of our slider out. Okay, that's pretty good. Of course, depending on the footage you're working with, you'll have to adjust your selection accordingly. Let's go to our color wheels now, and the adjustments we make here will actually be applied to our selection on her skin. So we're gonna try and make her complexion look more even by reducing some of the brightness or shine on her face. We'll adjust the gain, which will affect the brightness, blacks, and mid-tone points of our clip. I'll drag the slider to the left just a little bit to make the selection a little bit darker. Up here where it says mid slash details, drag it to around minus 66. Let's click on the highlighter to turn it off and see how we're doing so far. To check out the before and after with the node we were just working on selected, click once on the bottom of it to turn the effect off. Click again to turn it back on. Okay, and I'm happy with that. It's evened out her complexion and we've reduced some of the highlights on her face. Right click, choose node label. Let's call this complexion, if I can even remember how to spell complexion. Okay, yeah, that looks right. Let's right click on our complexion node, add node, add serial. Awesome, now let's select our tracker window for a second and drag our cursor all the way to the beginning of our clip, okay. Grab our qualifier tool, select an area of her skin, Turn the highlighter back on so we can see our selection so far. Let's adjust luminance and I'll adjust the slider to include more of her skin and a little bit of her neck. If you wanna select more or less of your subject, you can also choose the minus qualifier, which will remove part of your selection, or the plus qualifier, which I'm gonna choose. And I want this part of her chin to be included in the selection, so I'll click on it. Awesome. Now let's choose blur and we're gonna adjust radius. If we increase the radius all the way, her skin would start to look fake and plastic, so we don't want that. If we were to reduce it way down, it would be too sharp and just reveal too many imperfections, so we don't want that. We're looking to blur her skin just a little bit more to make it look softer and smoother without overdoing it because we don't want it to look fake. For this clip, around 0.59 is looking good. Let's turn the highlighter off. And like we did before, let's turn the effect off and notice the pores that are under her nose and the little hairs there and around her chin. Now let's turn the effect back on and it's reduced the pores, visibility of hairs, and even some blemishes. Okay, 
Right click, choose node label, and we'll call it smoothness. Great, let's right click again, add node, add serial. Now we're gonna work on reducing and hopefully removing her pimples. For the sake of saving you some time, I'm not gonna do this with every single one of the blemishes on her face. I'm gonna choose two in different areas of her face that might cause some different issues. So let's get started. Click on the power window to open it up and let's choose the circle mask. Grab one of the inner anchor points and drag in to decrease the size. And I'll drag this mask over this pimple here. Okay, so we have our mask created. Let's go back to blur. For this clip, I'll increase the radius. Let's try around 0.83. Pop over to the tracker window. Make sure our cursor's all the way at the beginning of the clip. And let's choose this play icon, which will track our mask forward, so throughout the clip. Okay, and Resolve is done tracking, but it looks like when she started to smile, the mask didn't continue to track perfectly over her pimple. Drag her cursor to the area of our clip where our mask starts to not track so well. Go up to the drop down menu on the left here, zoom into around 75% to get a closer look. We can reposition our mask so that it's over the blemish. Now, this new mask position has been saved. Instead of tracking the entire clip again, we're just gonna track it to the right from this point. Okay, so this time it's looking like Resolve did a great job of tracking her pimple as she starts to smile. In our tracker window, let's bring our cursor all the way to the beginning of our clip. To get a better look, let's turn our mask parameters off and press the spacebar to watch this back. Awesome, so that's done a great job. So we'll go up to the node, name that one top pimple, add another node, create another mask, adjust the size, position it over another blemish, go back to blur, blur our mask until we can't really see the blemish anymore. Let's pop back to the power window for a second because one other thing I wanna point out to you is if you're finding that the edges of your mask are sort of harsh or they're not blending in so well, what you can do is adjust the softness. Let's turn on the highlighter to see how this mask and the softness around it looks. Turn off the parameters. So when you increase the softness of a mask, in our case, it can help to blend the mask with the rest of the skin. Great, and now let's track it. And if you wanna see the before and after of all of the effects combined that we've added to our skin, you can click up here on the bypass icon. So that's before and that's after. There you go. That's how to make someone's skin look better in Resolve. Let me know in the comments below what you're struggling with in Resolve, what you wanna learn more about. I do my absolute best to teach Resolve tutorials clearly and thoroughly and in simple terms so that anyone, no matter what their experience is in Resolve, can follow along. Subscribe for weekly-ish content all about filmmaking, video editing, and gear reviews from us, and I'll see you in another video.